yo 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 this is stars with magic where we talk about the stars with magic and magic whoops my purse fell okay thank goodness it wasn't my food all right so somebody asked me what my sun moon mercury venus and mars placement was and so i figured i was like okay it's time <clears throat> it's time to let them know or to at least make an official video of me talking about my placements since i since this is an astrology channel and i plan to cover all all planets and aspects and everything so all right now I'm a sun sign Taurus, moon in Leo, Mercury, Gemini, Venus in Aries, Mars in Leo. I feel like all the other planetary placements are kind of irrelevant. Um, and my ascendant is Cancer. So, you know, um, with all that being said, I have a lot of fire in my chart. A lot of fire. But, this is the thing. I'm really proud of my sun sign Taurus. However, it's difficult because I have sun and moon in Leo, right? And Leo energy is star energy. They want to be the star. They are the star. They have what it takes to be the star. And um, this is kind of just like how they are, who they are. And it's built within them. Man, the, the, all the squirrels are really out and about today. Hmm. They're everywhere. Anyways, um, so with all that being said, um, okay, yeah. So it's interesting because anytime you have a sun square moon like myself, there's always this struggle between what the heart, what the self needs, and, with, and what the ego is comfortable doing. And I would have to say that because I have a sun, or I have moon and Leo, internally I'm a Leo, right? On the inside I feel like a Leo. On the inside I, I mean the way I express myself is like a Leo. It's very Leo 9. Okay? The Taurus energy is very it's very rich energy as i've said sun sign taurus energy very rich and it's ruled by the earth okay they always say that it's um you know ruled by venus but i you guys don't know what you're talking about i feel like people are too willing and ready to go according to the the status quo you know what people you know say oh this this means this and they're like okay fine this means this but it's like really i will only assign meaning to what really is i will only assign categories and labels to what things truly are now this is the thing when you're thinking about somebody's approach to life you want to look at the fifth house because yeah, okay when it comes to the houses and the planets the planetary aspects and placements are way more important when it comes to your day-to-day -day life your overall personality the foundation of who you are okay these are your personal planets but then when it comes to the houses this is like the grander scheme of your life okay <clears throat> My ascendant in Cancer doesn't mean that I live life like a Cancer. It does, and you know, yes, it has to do with kind of like first appearances, but it really doesn't have to do with your appearance. Yes, it 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 can, like with your physical appearance, but when it comes to your personality, like your ascendant, the only the only way that the ascendant affects your personality is how you 
approach life. Like, that's the only thing that the Ascendant will really tell you in terms of how people act is when they first meet you, when they first go into, like, a new job or a new school or, you know, a relationship or when they meet people for the first time or when they're in a situation they've never been in before. You know, this is what you're looking at the Ascendant for, okay? And the houses are kind of like th those parts of that person's life, okay? So when it comes to the fifth house, that is ruled by Leo, which is ruled by the sun. So this is kind of like the soul of the person. This is like how... This is where their true perspective on life will be. Like, yes, the Ascendant will have a major impact on how they feel towards the world. This will have to do with how they feel towards the world, okay? This will be how they choose to live out their purpose. But the fifth house has to do with how they feel about the world. You know, their their relationship to the world. And yes, this also can do with the, the tenth house. But it's in a much different way. You know, the fifth house is kind of like from within going out, going outward into the world, where the tenth house is kind of like the world coming in towards us, okay? So it's kind of like the fifth house is our relationship with society, and then the tenth house is society's relationship with us, okay? I hope y'all are watching. I hope y'all are watching because this is, I'm telling you, man, people... <laughs> People need to subscribe to this channel because it's like, if you want to get to know yourself, you need to know these things. You you really need to have a level of self-awareness because this is the thing. I'll be networking with people. I'll be meeting people. I'll be learning things about people. And I'll be seeing things that they do. And they have, they themselves, you can, I can see that they don't even know why they do that or they might even say i don't know why i do that i'm like i know why you do that i can tell you right now why you do that you know but a lot of people don't like to feel exposed or they don't like to feel like they're so easily read and understood but it's just like not everybody can understand people to the extent that i can so you know, it's a, it can be a blessing and a curse because it's like you you deal with people and nobody can really bullshit you. Excuse my language. But nobody can really lie to you. Nobody can really get one over on you. But then that means that anytime people see, because my approach to life is like a Scorpio. And what I mean by my approach to life is like a Scorpio, I mean like the truest extent of Scorpio. See... When you want to see somebody like <clears throat> the purest expression of an energy, you're going to look at the moon or you're going to look at fifth house, okay? These will be the parts of that person's life that are operating in the purest for the most part. Unless there's a planet that is like severely negatively aspe aspecting those areas, right? But Or aspecting planets that are in those areas but um you know yeah so the fifth house is kind of where you'll see for the most part this will be a major part of a person's overall expression like life expression okay and so since I have Pluto fifth house <clears throat> naturally you would probably see me getting involved in things like astrology and you would see me not have a natural knack for creating things that have to do with astrology or have to do with anything dark or spiritual or mysterious or symbolic or whatever. Um, yeah, and you know, so I have um, <clears throat> Mercury Gemini in the 12th house, okay? Now, what this means is um, that essentially my mind operates at the at the finest capacity right because we have mercury gemini this is where mercury is at home they say that mercury is also ruled or associated with virgo but virgo can be very mental and intellectual but they're more venusian than anything 
they're more like Venus. They're more like Libra than any other sign. Um, and so, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, um, Mercury, Gemini. So it, it kind of like, it's funny because since Mercury is at home here, it's almost like the, believe it or not, you would think that this would be Gemini, Mercury energy out of control. You would think that these people couldn't stop talking. Well, not really. Not really. It's almost like Mercury relaxes a little bit here in Mercury with Gemini, right? It's almost they're like, you know what? You, oh yeah, this is going to be a smooth ride. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, we're at home here. They, it's almost like Mercury and the constellation balance each other out. You know, it's almost like, it's almost like it's just, <clears throat> it's just harmonious. It's harmonious. So you really don't see the negative aspects of Gemini when it comes to Mercury Gemini, because this is the thing. Mercury and Gemini is purely mental energy. And the only time Gemini, the only time Gemini energy ever expresses negative, the negative sides of Gemini is when it's in a personal planet. Okay, when it's in a Venus or a Mars or a Moon or a Sun. This is where you'll you'll see the negative sides of Gemini. This is where you'll see Mercury being uncomfortable because that Mercury energy is not at home with the moon. It's not at home with the ego. It's not at home with relationships. And it's not at home with Mars and aggression. Okay, so the nervous energy comes out when it's not at home. But when it's with Mercury, it's just like, it's just like a machine that's working finally. Um, so there's that. And so you'll see, because... When it comes to, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I'll jump from subject to subject without even, I'll jump from one subject to another to another, three different subjects, and then I'll finish the third one. So it's kind of like my mind, my mind does jump around a lot, but it's almost like, it's really just that my mind is flexible. My mind usually, see, this is the thing. Mercury and Gemini it's almost since it's exalted so to speak since it's at home it usually operates on like a higher octave like it, it, it almost it almost like becomes an integrity and I've used this term you know the integrity of a planet meaning how well it's resting how well it's sitting how well it's when it's at home, it's almost like it's sitting on a throne and this is like, this is my place. And so the dignity rises, you know, it, it, it has more esteem in itself. And so usually Mercury and Gemini individuals from an early age, they know that they're intelligent. They know that they have mental powers that not a lot of people have. And so they'll prioritize grammar. They'll prioritize learning and becoming well-read and eloquent and so <clears throat> you know it, it's a great placement it's a great placement and I, I'm grateful I'm grateful that I have it and then I have that in the 12th house okay see this is where it's a little bit tricky but this is a major gift it's a major gift so Mercury the 12th house is kind of like associated with Pisces okay this is almost like it's associated with Pisces. However, this is the thing. It's not going to be affected by Neptune. The way it would be as if it was Mercury in Pisces. Or Mercury conjunction Neptune. It's not going to act out the same way. The 12th house is like the house of the spiritual realm. The house is, as I said, it, it has to do with areas of life. You know what? There. Hold on. Let me just, let me find a better area for this. Hold on. All right, I'm gonna try to not keep this going on for too much longer because I am in a public place as usual when I do these videos. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so I would have to say that whenever you have any, oh my gosh, the heck? whenever you have any planets, she sounded like she was right behind me. Um, 
whenever you have any planets placed in the 12th house you'll know that there's a spiritual gift associated with that planet okay what i mean is since like let's say i had Merc let's say i had venus in the 12th house okay my spiritual gift would be empathy for others relationships it was almost as if i'd be able to spiritually connect with my partners right with my with the people that i have in my life i could almost help them spiritually if i was spiritually grounded and and healthy enough you know that that would be a venus in the 12th house gift since i have mercury in the 12th house it's more so like my mind my mind has spiritual gifts okay i can see things or maybe even sometimes hear things or sense things that other people don't you know it, it's almost as if like my mind is truly connected to the physical and the spiritual realm that's really what i'm trying to say here my mind is both it's in both it's in reality and it's in the spiritual realm and um you know so oops. and when it comes to mercury since your mind is in the spiritual realm you're more inclined to be aligned with the spiritual realm right because you'll have um it, it'll almost not necessarily be like a priority but it'll be something that is just oriented that way you know there there will always be this interest in the spiritual realm you know there will always be this ability to tap in you know naturally and so mercury in the 12th house people can have dreams of the future you know dreams that actually manifest you know uh they might have a dream that something really bad is going to happen to somebody or something that or something really good happening to somebody and then you'll see maybe a couple months later or a week or two later day or two later it happens right it comes to pass maybe sp maybe maybe exactly how it was dreamt or maybe symbolically right but um you know there there is that gift there with mercury in the 12th house right now i'm not gonna go on for too much longer because i have a couple minutes left but you know um so venus and aries i'll let you know that i do struggle with having venus and aries because it's almost like i can be really attracted to men that are very athletic very sexy very interested right but i don't know how to flirt it's like venus and aries they just tell you what it is they don't say oh <laughs> playing games and like uh like let's say there is a venus and libra venus and libra will flirt venus and libra will say things that can turn you on you know venus and libra can tell you that they find you attractive in the most non-obvious indirect way venus and aries is like I don't have the time to formulate a way to play this game, you know? And um, so, you know, they can struggle, especially if it's a female with Venus and Aries, because, you know, usually men, especially if she's heterosexual, right? Usually men will prefer a female that is less assertive you know less direct less confrontational okay now i'm not saying that i'm super problematic and i go around fighting people arguing with people and or anything like that but when i see something i say something you know and um i'm not saying that i go around policing people but i'm saying if i see somebody or I hear somebody arguing or whatever, or if I see a child being bullied, like, you know, there's just so many things. Um, or, or if, you know, just somebody's wronging me, you know, or if I feel like people are being rude or disrespectful to me, I will let them know. You know, it's kind of like Venus and Aries is not, uh, it can be very selfish. I'm not going to lie. It can be very selfish and self-centered, very self, in a very sad kind of way. And so I have Venus in the 10th house. 
which is most associated with Capricorn, but really it's like even more than Capricorn because this is the house of like society, right? This is the house of society's relationship with the self, right? Rather than this, the relationship with self and society. It's like outward coming in word, okay? And um, it can be difficult because they can be obsessed with success. Um, this was actually one of my mottos last year, become obsessed with success. A lot of people might not even be able to relate with that. They'll be like, what? They're like, that sounds unhealthy. <laughs> well, 10th house placements usually have a lot to do with work and career. And so having Venus here, it's like their enjoyment comes from success in their career and work and making progress in their career. So it's like having Venus in Aries that wants to be number one in the 10th house of career and it's kind of like there are major, major opportunities and potential for success. Is that my bus? I don't think so. Well, anyways, before I miss my bus, this was Stars with Magic, me talking about myself. With all that being said, I don't know if this was all that exciting. I thought this was going to be way more exciting, but honestly, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Peace.